In a few days, Montanans will vote on Initiative 190, which would legalize marijuana in all of Montana and provide a 20% tax on such. The governor's office estimates that in five years, this will create 38.5 million a year in taxation. That 38.5 million is the 20% tax revenue. So that means this initiative will allow cannabis corporations to flood Montana schools and communities with $193 million of pot per year in five years, 135 million in pot the first year. Oh, but they say this won't affect our students and youth because we will also be voting on an unenforceable constitutional amendment that wants every sector of our society is saturated by $193 million worth of pot per year, people under 21 won't be able to get it. Yeah, that's a pipe dream if I ever heard of it. You'll hear a testimony in a minute of the valedictorian of a California school that says when she goes into the hallways, it, it, it reeks of pot, that when she goes into the school bathrooms, it's cloudy with the pot fumes, and that her fellow classmates are not productive people now. They are not doing their schoolwork and they're not getting jobs. And you'll hear from her teacher as well that says it's caused her whole class to just spiral downward. Now they just care about getting stoned. And when California legalized it, they made that same stipulation that people under 21 can't have it. This is what you're really voting on, folks, because it's not about freedom. Already in Montana, you can go into any dispensary and they'll give you a list of doctors that'll get you a recommendation for a card for 60 bucks. So it's not about freedom. This is about $193 million worth of pot coming into our schools and communities and the meth and the crack and particularly the heroin that come rolling in right on its heels together with the people that sell such. So we have created a list of 15 great reasons for you to vote no on Initiative 190. You will hear from a teacher in California. You will hear from numerous people who left Oregon, left Colorado when the riffraff came and the heroin flooded into their schools. So I know they say the grass is greener on the other side, no pun intended, but listen to what it's really doing to the states where it has been legalized. As a teacher from California, marijuana has just ruined our youth. Our kids have lost their motivation. They don't want to study. They don't want to do anything. They just want to get stoned. So no, marijuana is completely, uh, it just ruins people. That's yeah. all I have to say. It's, yeah, she um, says they're just spiraling downwards. No motivation. And so it's just ruining our youth. And if it continues to be legalized in our country, it's just making our country going down, going downwards. That's right. This young lady was saying it just stinks in the hallways. Oh my gosh. I go to the bathroom, it stinks like pot. I go anywhere. They're looking for places to smoke pot. They post it on their stories as if it's something cool. But in reality, they're not being productive people at all at my school studying not getting jobs nothing that's right just, just loafing just loafing well you know that's my story too in eighth grade i had a 3.78 grade point average i was turning heads in baseball got to travel internationally with the all-star teams in age 12 and yet i got into pot and by high school i was just selling pot and smoked three times a day and uh, skipping school and i was voted in the senior class as the most spaced out kid who better than a former deep pot smoking seller to tell about the uh, potential harmful effects of pot. $193 million worth of pot coming into a state requires major merchandising in the form of gaudy billboards, signage, box stores. You can already see the gaudy signs cropping up in Montana already. And when it legalized in Canada, they ran out of supplies in two days. There was such a run on the pot. <laughs> Is that what we really want in Montana? That's not the kind of Montana I want to live in. And I encourage you to think this through before you cast your vote based on all this propaganda that the multi-billion dollar cannabis industry has 
put our way. I use fear component of it being legal. I thought it was sort of silly for it to make it illegal, but after visiting Oregon, don't want to have anything to do with it. Oregon is a mess. It's an absolute mess. People are all stoned all the time. You go to a merchant and they don't make any sense. Everybody's sitting out and picking tables and smoking dope. It just is a mess. Yes. There's a lot of people moving here from Oregon, California, and Colorado because they just can't stand it anymore. Yeah, it stinks like hell. They just, it's awful. It's just a mess. Yeah, they say freedom, but what about our freedom to breathe clean air? Yeah. Thank you. Keep the riffraff out of Montana. Oregon has the riffraff because of this. This brother here was just telling me as soon as Oregon legalized it, it brought all the crime and the, the riffraff and the yuck. So thanks. But quite frankly, that was the end of the line for us as the whole Coloradans. We left the state because they made pot legal and free and you know the result of that that we've seen down there is you know all kinds of riffraff and strange people moving in the neighborhood and it just leads to other things to me it's, it's just a gateway situation and not a good thing for anybody in the state of montana well i'm talking with a gal here who is really excited to see our stickers because she said when i came to colorado it just ruined everything because so many other drugs came in too but, yeah marijuana came in at first came in with this marijuana and it totally ruined Colorado and heroin uh, took over the high school, Real Choice Drugs, Highlands Ranch and um, they even had a, a needle sanctuary downtown Denver. So um, mushrooms came in for a while and now they're back out but it's, it's ruined in Colorado. We left. And you came to Montana in hopes of getting rid of all that stuff? Yes. All right. Yes, values. Come on, Montana. Vote it down. Seattle is dying. Do you think it accurately depicts what Seattle's like right now? I mean, look, if anything, it underplays exactly what's happening. In the last 10 days, there was an instance in which a mentally ill homeless man, six foot three, 270 pounds, tried to throw a woman over a highway overpass. And then just today, literally hours ago, in the community of Ballard, there was a homeless man who was attacking people with a crate. He hit one individual in the head. I work at a hospital in Colorado, Washington. We were on the forefront of legalizing the pot. And at the hospital, it's a completely legal drug. Everybody knows that. Everybody knows that. A lady just told me that in Denver, where they lived, when pot got legalized, their high school was running over with heroin. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Yeah. And, and our streets and our, our, our high schools, our, our streets and everywhere in Washington is just full of heroin and methamphetamine. It is a generation of Seattleites falling out of love with their home. This is no joke, my fellow Montanans. I own this business and talk to dozens of people from neighboring states every day. You have already heard from three individuals or couples who left their state that they love just as much as you and I love Montana because when it went to pot, it was not somewhere that they wanted to live. But I'm telling you, here in my business, I've talked to many others that were reluctant to go on video that said the same thing. We all know that Seattle had a homeless problem even before pot was legalized, but once it was legalized and it flooded in like they're wanting to flood into Montana and the other drugs that flooded in with it came exploding onto the horizon, it was multiplied 10 times and communities are coming apart at the seams in Seattle Look at this town hall meeting and see for yourself. If property crime is committed, violence is committed, you need to call 911 and the police. You've lost all credibility when you say, you said two words. You said, call 911. Do you understand that the police have told us to vote you all out so that they can do their jobs? And you're telling us, call living 
The way we're living in beautiful Seattle, people are angry, furious about the way we are living. My guess is that there are good people that care about their community on both sides of that controversy. But once the floodgate of drugs is opened up into community, you can't easily undo the damage it does, and nobody has answers. I drive my 12-year-old's carpool through Yesler uh, when we do carpool, and it's a good talking point about, you know, what they're seeing, what we can do to help, you know, how we can make a difference. And honestly, at this point, I don't have a good answer for how we can make a difference. Once the weeds get going in a community, it snowballs into heroin, crack, meth, homelessness, and social problems that have no end. The people in the Seattle Town Hall meeting were practically foaming into a riot, but the solution for Montana is easy at this point. Pluck the weed out. Don't let it get started or it will take over. Now we have other serious problems in Montana, such as alcoholism, and people would argue, well, we've already got alcoholism, why not have rampant drug addiction? The reason is, sometimes you gotta deal with one specific type of weed at a time. And we all know that nobody's gonna vote out alcohol in Montana, at least not in our lifetime. So let's be intelligent and win the battles that we are able to win. For want of a nail, the horseshoe fell off. For want of a horseshoe, the steed was disabled. For want of a horse, the message was not delivered. For want of a delivered message, the war was lost. My friend, you are the nail that determines whether or not this message will get delivered. So share it on your Facebook, share it on your Instagram, tweet this out, and let's be a state that's clean and free and productive. Our fourth reason not to legalize pot in Montana came from a sergeant at the Flathead County Sheriff's Department. He said he doesn't want it because it handcuffs their ability to bust hard drugs like meth, crack, and heroin because the main way that they bust the hard drugs is that when they walk up to a car and they smell pot, it gives them probable cause to search that car and then they find the crack and the heroin and the hard drugs. He said that when a state legalizes pot, they actually see a decrease in busts of hard drugs because the officers no longer have the ability to search the car when it reeks of pot in order to find the hard drugs. Our fifth great reason to not legalize pot in Montana is as follows. Non-resident travel, tourism, is our second largest industry supporting 11% of the state's jobs. Now in 2018, tourism paid $213 million in state and local taxes. In 2019, it paid $265 million in state and local taxes. That's a jump of $35 million in just one year. Now, the government office projects that after the cannabis industry is flooding Montana with $193 million worth of pot in five years, then they will pay $38.5 million per year. So Montana's gold mine of tourism that jumps in taxes in one year, the amount that pot expects to pay in five years, is being jeopardized by this cannabis industry because not that many people want to travel where there's a bunch of addicted people that are suffering on the streets in plain sight and where there's a bunch of big gaudy need weed billboards like the ones that I showed you entering every city in Oregon. The facts they gave in the special Seattle is dying is that Seattle spends over one billion dollars per year on the homeless and addicted problem in Metro Seattle. Now, the drug taxes that Washington collects per year are $395 million. So that looks to me like one city alone is losing $600 million because of the problems that drugs have created. Now, it wants to make it sound like marijuana just gives and doesn't take anything, but the reality is that there is a big price take to all these addicted people 
that are now on the streets. So it's really not good business for Montana to sacrifice the goose that laid the golden egg, which is increasing in taxation paid 35 million per year in order to litter our horizons with these big weed signs and our cities with homeless addicted people for a paltry 38 million per year, which at least half will probably be spent on the problems it creates in terms of mental illness and homelessness. With the passing of marijuana in Washington state, taxes are useless because they go to drug rehab and homelessness. DUIs have gone up over 600%. It's gonna be beneficial for everybody that wants to do nothing and be lazy. Yeah, what were you saying about the productivity? Oh, it's useless. There is no productivity. People just want to sit around and smoke pot. The kids are dropping out of school. They're sitting there on the side of walks on the park smoking pot all day. This couple told me they're flatlanders from Oklahoma and wanted a vacation. So they went to Loveland, Colorado, but they said there was addicted homeless people everywhere and it was really kind of sad to even be there. And they said the people of the community told them there wasn't such until marijuana was legalized. So they looked at each other and they said, let's get out of here. This isn't refreshing. They came to Montana and were so overjoyed at the peaceful, family-friendly environment. But then they noticed some were trying to legalize it here. And they said, why in the world would we want to trade this pristine peace for that? Point number six. I used to smoke pot three times a day. I was a cross-country ski racer who wanted to quit it because I could feel it gumming up my lungs and affecting my race times. I am personally not convinced that gumming up your lungs is the way to a medical breakthrough. But for those who believe that it is, you can go into any dispensary in Montana and they will give you a list of doctors that will give you a referral for $60. So we are not cramping anybody's style by voting no on I-190. We are only saving our state from $193 million of pot coming in each year. I run a very busy place and I and every other business in the Flathead has a challenge getting enough employees in the summer and this will only compound that problem tenfold. Most people that smoke chronically, they develop abolition or lack of motivation to really do things. Oh. And they kind of need a stimulant to pick themselves up to do those things. I used to be an advocate for marijuana. I used to fight for it. And uh, I used to think it had a bunch of health benefits and everything like that. And uh, I'm holding this sign of the sticker. So I wanted to be delivered from it even when I was smoking it because I would have trouble breathing that night. And really the only thing that's supposed to go in your lungs is oxygen. <laughs> so, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, not, nothing else. Even, you know, vapes and all that. Um, and I got to the point where I had a, a marijuana vape and I was even smoking it in my job and, and everywhere, so that really got me hooked. So I tried it on my own, I tried to stop it on my own, and the only, the only thing that can really deliver you from it is Jesus Christ, and uh, that's really all I got to say. Nice. Reason number eight, many family-oriented, productive, non-drug people leave a state when it becomes a drug haven. So we left the state because they made pot legal. If we have the courage and wisdom to reject I-190, Montana will become a magnet for productive, family-oriented, non-drug people. On the other hand, if we capitulate, some of our best people will make an exodus from Montana, and in exchange, we will get a massive criminal element, homeless element, and people that are selling hard drugs. Point number nine, Michael, is secondhand pot smoke. Once it is legalized, public smoking becomes common. And people that don't want to have to smell it are forced to smell it at every concert, public fireworks display, beach, football game. Those who want it are chanting, freedom, freedom. But what about our freedom to breathe clean air in the place that has the cleanest air in the nation? Come on, Michael, don't be silent at such a time like this. We need you to say, Beat it! Reason number 10. Once a state becomes dependent on drug money, it's a hard, if not impossible, habit to break. You saw the footage of Washington and their crown jewel, Seattle, dying in the midst of the drug crisis that marijuana has started there. Yet when COVID hit, their government deemed their whole marijuana industry as essential because they can't live without the money. 
a sergeant involved in front lines battle over 100 men for a year and a half in Nam testified that many of his men that were smoking pot just seemed to have dull depth perception and reflexes and ended up dead. And for that reason, he was really feeling that the legalization of pot nationwide is really jeopardizing our national security. I'm from Vietnam. I served there for a year and a half. Lost too many men while they were on pot. So please keep it out of your state. I'm from Las Vegas and I'm not happy about it being there. Point number 12, God will bless us as a state if we resist and if we capitulate. I believe that the opposite will happen. Did anybody besides me notice that COVID hit the strongest in the pot states in the early stages? while Montana was one of the only states in the nation that didn't have a case? Did anybody but me notice that Oregon and California were fiery infernos that had some of their worst fire seasons in the history of their state this year, while Montana had almost nothing? I tell you, there is a blessing on this state. On January 8th, 2018, while I was in my winter home of Austin, God spoke to me that I needed to return to Montana and I needed to begin aggressively resisting this state becoming a pot state. When I arrived here in Hungry Horse, there was only a half inch of snow on January 10th. And people were saying, whoa, this is going to be the worst fire season we ever had on record. But I got together with three or four of the young men here that were sick and tired of what pot is doing to their fourth and fifth grade classmates. And we started handing out this stickers. On March 9th, 2018, we handed out 500 stickers in the uh, parking lots in Kalispell. And they were so excited. They were saying, no drugs, no drugs. And then they'd go hand out the stickers. And God began to bless us, I'm telling you. We had an unbelievable deluge of snow begin the moment that we began resisting. After a while, people were telling me, hey, I think you can stop praying for snow. I don't got anywhere else to put it. On the other hand, I had a friend from Oregon visit a week or two ago. And when I took him hiking, it was pretty smoky from Oregon and California smoke rolling in. And I wore a mask and he said, what are you wearing a mask for? We had to drive seven hours to get to air this clean. <laughs> Holy. The reason I make this point is this is a spiritual issue. On one hand, in God we trust, he will provide, protect, help us. And on the other hand, pot will provide. It'll fill our tills, pay our bills, and cure our ills. So consider heaven's response as you vote. Vote no on I-190 and the fairy tale that if we make an amendment, the people under 21 aren't going to have it. They'll have it the most. Point 13, the National Academy of Medicine, the group that is supposed to warn us of risks, reports that using pot, quote, is likely to increase the risk of schizophrenia and other psychosis. The higher the use, the greater the risk. Between 2006 and 2014, emergency room visits for marijuana-induced psychosis tripled to 90,000, and all of the first four states to legalize marijuana have seen, quote, sharp increases in murders and aggravated assaults. That's partly why I'm so fired up about this. One of my strong and noble friends got into it and shot his wife, then shot himself. <laughs> Point number 15, a state cannot harm their most valuable resource, people, even for cash payouts in the form of tax dollars, and expect it to be a win-win situation. And don't tell me it doesn't harm people. It harmed my life. It almost erased five key years of my life while we were sitting around getting stoned, listening to Jonathan Edwards sing, gonna lay around the shanty and get a good buzz on. That's all I could have is a shanty because my get up and go had got up and went. A lot of people are affected that way, and we don't need to harm Montana by taking some of our greatest resource, which is people, and turn them into 
Gonna lay around the shanty and get a good buzz on, folks. Basically, when I was 14 years old, marijuana was the introduction to, to drugs and alcohol in my life. I would use it recreationally and use it with friends. And you know, times where you were just hanging out, having parties, and just, just to feel different, feel good, and fit in. But as I got older, marijuana was just the start. It opened up the doorway for me to start drinking, start using uh, prescription painkillers. Marijuana was the start of something that got a lot worse. Methamphetamine, cocaine, or any kind of drug that I could get my hands on. Yeah, it sounds like it also even opened up heroin. And you were, he was saying to me that it took away his job, his fiance, his family, just kind of raped your world, huh? Um, when I was uh, 28, I decided that I would get off drugs and alcohol. Now, I've got two years sober today. Uh, it'll be two years on the 1st of July. Also, another issue with marijuana is when women are smoking and they're pregnant, it's causing neurological issues and lower IQs on their fetuses after they're born. Wow. This customer tells how his son got into weed and then opiates and is dead. How are you? Uh, my son was very, very intelligent. Uh, he got very bored with school. Led, which led him into smoking pot, and from pot led him into other drugs, and eventually my son passed away from opiates. So please don't let this get legalized. Hey, I'm here with Mr. Mike, and he's kind of like me that pot was a big part of his life and the bud was a big part of his gig, and, and now he's uh, sharing a little tonight about what the changes have come into his life. Yes, um, I thank God that he has delivered me from that, and um, for so long I, I needed it. I couldn't, in my head, couldn't live without it. It was a necessity. It was something that I had to have um, every day. It was just a part of my lifestyle. And so I'm thankful, I'm grateful now that I am recording sessions um, totally without it. It's literally blowing my mind because I never thought in a million years, never thought in a million years that I would be able to record music without the marijuana, without the pot. Um, I'm still tripping out and bugging that I'm, because it's been, it was so long that every studio session that was the main ingredient. The <laughs> before the session started, before yeah. we can hit any button or before I mean, we can play any instrument, we got to make sure that the pot was on deck. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Ask God for the deliverance. Ask him to come into your spirit, come into your life and give you that high that he's capable of giving you, which no drug, no alcohol, no pot, no other narcotic can compare to the high and the spiritual favor that God can give you. And now I'm making the most beautiful music, sober. It's absolutely amazing. I encourage you guys to try it. And before you know it, you won't crave it anymore. Um, it's gonna take some time for some of us, you know, it didn't just happen overnight. But for others, hey, depending on how strong you are in your spirit, if you feel like that's what you want out of life, Try it, do it, make it happen to everybody out there. Peace out, peace and love, hey, and let God be your spiritual natural high. My father homesteaded in Fairfield, Montana, then came here to Hungry Horse and helped log out the Hungry Horse Reservoir. You could be in a complacent state with this issue, thinking, ah, oh, whatever happens, happens, it's gonna happen. But this vote could be very, very close, and your vote and the two or three people that you influence could be the deciding factor. So share the video, do what you can to influence several people in your world, and let's keep Montana as the last best place. We have a flyer form of this presentation for you and a bumper sticker that you can get for free by sending a self-addressed stamped envelope to Keep Montana Productive, Box 362, Hungry Horse, Montana, 59919. Thank you for your time, and God bless you. You can also connect with us on Facebook, Keep Montana Productive.